It is time for the August Hubnut fleet update. So um, let's jump in with the little hero of the fleet at the moment. It's Desmond the Parodua Canari. Dating from 2004, it's a Daihatsu move, but built in Malaysia. We've now covered 2,700 miles since buying this car in early July. And uh, we did 300 mile trips either side of our recent breakaway uh, to Spain. And uh, amazing, amazing little car. The only slight issue is I don't quite fit in it. And uh, yesterday was hard work. It was hard work for both of us because uh, Miss Hubner had her first experience of driving a car that really catches the wind. I don't know if you can hear, it's still a bit gusty even today. So that was mildly terrifying. And we also had horrendous traffic queues. But yeah, 300 miles took us seven hours yesterday. The joys of driving in the UK. But yeah, this little thing, amazing. We really must do a timing belt change on it. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just going great guns. And although I don't like it as a distance machine, I love it for bombing around here in the Welsh Hills. It is kind of perfect for that. Uh, jumping onto Tuk the Invercar, still waiting for her bodywork fettling. I may take her out in this video. We may go and terrorize the tourists of Nuki. It is the bank holiday weekend. Nuki isn't far away. And I think it would just be amusing to just do a lap of Nuki. Uh, people always smile so much when they see this ridiculous little car. Uh, Betty de Ford Fairmont is still on a bit of a break at the moment. No mechanical reason for that. More that we can't really afford the fuel at the moment. But she is still taxed, so still on the road. She may yet be doing some miles in the coming week, so we shall see. We might be going off to see my family. My family are coming up to the Midlands, so uh, we might go and visit them. And I think Betty will be the steed. Just... It'd be nice to do some effortless miles after screaming along in Desmond the Canary. A one liter engine goes well, but you're having to work the car hard. And it's interesting to see uh, Miss Hubnut developing her anticipation skills. When you drive tiny cars, as I do all the time, uh, you learn to anticipate, put your foot down way before you need to make a maneuver. So um, she's learning all about that at the moment. Poor Bob here, the folding camper. Uh, we haven't been away in Bob at all recently, um, but uh, we do hope to get away in September. It's just the, the way the summer has panned out. We haven't had time to go away in Bob, but uh, we will do. It doesn't help that the only working tow car is one that is fearsomely, fearsomely thirsty. She does about 20 mpg when she's towing Bob. Not ideal. Which brings us to a better tow vehicle, Bella the Bolingo. Uh, she's away... We've got some repair work needs doing. That work, I believe, is progressing or is about to progress. So Bella should be back on the fleet just in time for the end of summer. Typical. Uh, Chemin de Chirard is still parked up. Uh, she needs some work. Uh, we want, want to really do the steering rack on Chemi. Uh, that needs replacing. We've been putting that off for a while now. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to think what else. There was definitely something else where we thought, oh, we'll, we'll take... Show me off the road and we'll use the Parodua instead. That's kind of what's been happening. Uh, Ellie the 2TV will be coming out later today. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go and have a little razz around in Tuck just because. Uh, but then I think Ellie the 2TV will be coming out to be default daily for the next few days, maybe. I haven't said that. I know we've got to go away in Betty uh, on Monday, probably. So, hmm. Yeah, decisions to be made. But uh, try and get some miles on Ellie, because Ellie hasn't been doing a, a vast lot lately. And then, of course, we've got Paul Myrtle. I still don't know what to do with Paul Myrtle. Um, yeah, as you can see, she's just disappearing under things, as she so often does. It's a little car we don't need. We're, 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 we've got too many little oriental cars. We, we just don't need uh, the Deu Matiz at the moment. So, um, yeah, what do I do? That car means so much to me, but its actual value is pretty low, especially as quite a lot doesn't work at the moment. I uh, probably should dig in and try and fix that. Uh, the only other car that isn't here at the moment is the Mitsubishi Pajero. Uh, as we've explained before, um, that is um, still with Whiteland Restorations and the plans to get it over here haven't quite worked. We've kind of made space, so we have a space to put the Pajero in, but uh, it hasn't quite made it yet. And even worse, I think we're acquiring another car. Um, that'll all be revealed next weekend. So um, I may be saving another car from the ULES scheme uh, in that there London. But uh, more on that next weekend, if it happens. It, we've got to tie some logistics up. It's proving challenging. We're about 
260, I think, 270 miles away from London. So um, trying to make the logistics work is a little bit tricky, but as it happens, we have to go to London. So um, it should be possible. Um, and, and just to head off a few people, because we've already mentioned this in the member vlog, and a few people have said, oh, I'll we'll see if I can get my car ready. Our schedule is packed next weekend. We do not have time for doing road tests or uh, meeting up, I'm afraid. Uh, it's primarily a family visit, but um, couldn't resist adding a mild possible collection caper into it. It's just how I operate. I'm, I'm terrible. But yeah, that, that's what's going on with Hubnut Fleet at the moment. But uh, should we get took out for a Raz? I think it kind of has to be done. It's a beautiful sunny day. It is a bit windy and the Invercar is terrifying in a crosswind. But uh, yeah, we can't take her out on a day like today. When can I take her out? Right then, um, we've got oil pressure working now. That's our charge light. Uh, the bottom one here is choke. Oh, that's feeling a bit stiff. And then these are heater controls, but the heater's not really connected up. The heater should feed out of this pipe um, up and around here to a vent that blows down the windscreen. It's bloody hopeless. Uh, no good at all. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, that's there, that's there, that's there. Let's just give her a spin. So it's a Dynastart, it's an electric motor. We've got to get the fuel through. Uh, give her a bit of throttle. Oh, she's in gear. Dangerous. And there we go. Now put the handbrake on and uh, release the chock. It's a brick. But um, getting a bit more engine noise than normal because I've just put that little mic there. That sounds like a bit too much choke now. That's probably not quite enough. Ah well, uh, just to get rid of the cobweb that seems to have embedded itself on the windscreen wiper. Right, a bit more choke. You're adjusting the fuel mixture, basically. There we go. Marvellous. Let's go for a drive. Right, before we go anywhere, we'll wash the windscreen. And on with a wiper. There we go. Must get around to fitting a new wiper blade, really. This one's a bit old. We've even got some fly splats. But I've uh, got a full tank of fuel. Uh, voltmeter seems to be working. All good. Uh, no passenger carrying, no, it is forbidden. Right, uh, let's get you in and off we go. There we go. 20 mile an hour zones, no problem at all in the uh, Invergar. Open up her little 493cc air cooled flat twin. The continuously variable transmission gets our speed up to 40 without the revs changing significantly. So braking bustly, that's the brakes. Twist to go. This is the mobility scooter of its day really, but also filling in for cars because a lot of people who had these couldn't drive a car, couldn't afford a car, and still needed to get about to places of work, etc. Public transport was very unfriendly towards the disabled, huge steps to get on board, etc. No low floor buses. So for a lot of people, this was it. Uh, here we go, 60 mile an hour. Coming now. We might not get to 60. Tend to find 50s enough, to be honest. Which is about that. The door's rattling, sorry, I keep meaning to fix that and I never do. The catch needs adjusting. But as 
good as these cars were in terms of the mobility they gave people, they also carried such stigma. People called them all manner of horrible names. And if you're the sort of person who thinks, oh, I know, I'll put down what we used to call them. Oh, hello, XJS. Just don't, we don't need that sort of language anymore. If you see someone of Indian or Pakistani descent, you don't call them what we used to in the olden days. Uh, if you see someone of African descent, you definitely don't use language we used in the past. Sometimes we as a society move on. And I'm glad we moved on from this and started giving people proper cars with hand controls or public transport that was actually accessible if you're in a wheelchair. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad we don't stigmatize in quite the same way. We've got the Paralympics. Oh, you're moving around all over the place. Paralympics coming up, of course. I'm gonna have to stop and adjust my camera. It seems to have gone into free swing mode. We had a Paralympics proving that uh, disability is probably the wrong word now. Um, it's just differently abled, perhaps. But uh, yeah, language changes. And uh, it's been upsetting. There's been a few times lately where I've published what I've been up to in this little car. And the comments are horrible. Bring them back and all that. Why have we as a society got so negative about everything? Why as a society have we got jealous of disabled people being able to use some of their disability benefits to cover the cost of a car? That's how motability works. No one's handing out BMWs or Range Rovers willy-nilly. Quite upsetting. Anyway, we shall continue to Nuki. Oh, there's a view I've never been able to give you before. Ah, if you're in the countryside and you see a cone like that, watch out. It can mean tractors may be emerging. Yep, they're working in that field there. So just slow down and take care. The drop down into Nuki. People in the beer garden are already going, what the hell is that? Absolutely beautiful coastline ahead. Uh, Cardigan Bay. Oh, car park is absolutely heaving. So we wouldn't normally venture into Newquay on bank holiday weekend, but uh, we'll make the exception today. I think we should have quite the audience. Uh, we're going to go around this way. Yeah, believe it or not, we get full-size buses coming along here. So, uh, they're a bit of a squeeze. In fact, judging by the people waiting, buses in both directions are due. Oh, something's just gone past. Stinking of hot brakes or clutch. Jeepers, that was bad. Right, I'm sure. Turn left here, past the seahorse. And uh, as you can see, it's... Um, it's definitely a bank holiday. Now, people can't hear Tuk coming because she's rear engine, so you have to go a bit careful when there's folk about. Yeah, what is that car? No doubt no, your parents are telling you it's a Reliant. Nope. Nor is it a Bond. Uh, a bit of a squeeze through here. Not as much of a squeeze for me as the uh, Corolla Hybrid. The buses don't come down here, but the bin lorries do somehow.
It is a three-wheeler, well done. No, nothing wrong with his eyes. I think the car in front of me may be the one with the hot brakes. Absolutely stinks. I think there may be a seized caliber, I think. Ah, oh, people parking, that's why. Maybe it was a bad idea to come for a drive through Nuki today. This bit is a proper pinch point because uh, the cliff face is just to my right hand side so people and cars get a bit squeezed together here. What are you hoping to find up there? There isn't much. Right, we'll give you a quick rundown. Um, gelato here, absolutely delicious for ice cream. Uh, I came for ice cream here after having a date with Miss Hubnut for the very first time uh, about five years ago. Oh gosh, this really is a squeeze. Uh, if you want chips, the lime crab down there is pretty good. Uh, we also like uh, the one just around the corner here, uh, the mariners. They do a full range of nice food, decent lunches, etc. Uh, but ahead of us is our favourite, uh, Captain's Rendezvous. Uh, it's a really nice chippy family run uh, different family now from when we reviewed it uh, a few years ago for a video but uh, yeah very good nonetheless and then we're back up we've got the pepper pot here on the right does amazing food slightly higher standard oh look, Caroline my neighbors up there We've got the big climb up Church Street. If you're on foot, this one really gets the calf muscles burning. Hello! Oh, this car gets people smiling like nothing else. Although Ellie comes a close second, to be fair. Thank you very much and away we go back up the hill again so there we go just a little run out in uh, took the Invercar I'm probably gonna take any of the 2CV home especially as I've realized what a drive we've got ahead of us to get to my family it's all tight and twisty roads that's not well suited to Betty at all so uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed our little run out in Tug the Invercar. We do have Tug the Invercar merchandise available at the Hubnut store, which is open once more after our little break. Oh, come on, Tug. Tug and Gravity are not the best of friends. And we also, not for very much longer, because we're running low on stocks, still have our five stickers for five pounds offer. We don't know what stickers you'll get. It's a random bundle. So uh, head to the Hubnut store, hubnut.org, for all your merchandise needs. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye. Oh, and now we're motoring. Well, we haven't had an Ellie Hoon for a while, have we? So let's have one today.
just as a bit of a brucey bonus. Go, go, go. After all, as I recall this, record this rather, the uh, 2CV 24-hour race is getting underway at Snetterton in the UK. So after you've watched this video, there is a live stream on YouTube that you can go and watch. So that might be fun for you. Runs from 3pm on the Saturday to 3pm on the Sunday. They don't roll like this though, they're very stiffly sprung. I did drive one of the race cars on the road a few years ago with the Blueberry Muffins who are competing this year. Chris and Maria should be having lots of fun. And Sparrow, who owns the engine in Ellie at the moment, uh, Pete Sparrow is competing and is probably the favourite. He's got two other drivers with him, I think. But Pete knows how to build the cars as well as how to race them. So uh, he'll be aiming to be champion again. And just to liven it up, there's a couple of minis. There's a couple of modified Belgian racers, I think. And uh, some Citroen C1s having a 24-hour race. So uh, lots of fun to be had. Less fun to be had on the roads today. We are stuck behind dawdling tourists, but it's always nice to have Ellie out. Uh, we took her all the way to Croatia five years ago and just haven't had a big adventure since really. Now 24 years of ownership, um, about 130,000 miles we're getting on for together and the car that has been through an awful lot with me and has been changed an awful lot but it's somehow still Ellie the 2CV that I bought in the summer of the year 2000. But yeah, going really nicely. This engine is a peach and I must give it back to Sparrow uh, at some point and put the 652 we built earlier this year, or rather Colin built earlier this year in. But uh, always a joy to be out in Ellie the 2CV. Our last outing in Ellie the 2CV was Aberair on show. Uh, Aberair on vintage show. I know vintage means post-1931, but around here it is used to describe classic. That show was amazing and I got to drive a tractor. If you haven't seen that show report yet, I do recommend you go and check it out. Some very interesting cars, very interesting tractors, including one with a Detroit diesel, which was unexpected. So go and check that out. And yeah, we'll see you in a future video. Bye.